nobody calls Han Solo a bitch. Bring him on. I prefer a straight fight to all this sneaking around. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Oh, come on, bro. It's the wars. So it feels kind of weird now being in between Star Wars content. But we do get a new look at Galactic Star Cruiser, take two. This is the Wars and More. I'm Joe. Of course, with me is my good buddy, Doug. Hey, Doug, how you doing this week? Doing pretty good, Joe. How you doing? All right. Slow's new again. Slow's yeah. new again. Slow's new? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it, we got to readjust every time, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. It's like you're getting hit, you're getting hit, getting hit, and then, yeah, take a break. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, but Galactic Star Cruiser, they took another shot at it. Yeah, I, so, you know, if everyone recalls, we did have that, that first uh, trailer or first look or whatever you wanted to call it uh, with the dude from uh, Goldberg's, and uh, that was met with some pretty harsh criticism. Well, deservedly so. I would say yes. Because, I mean, you know, the the corniness of the of the trailer or whatever aside. Yeah, you know, notwithstanding. There was not a whole lot in there made you think star wars other than you know a lightsaber no i mean it so what was that what was that like arcade thing they had at uh disney springs or downtown disney it used to be was it disney quest right maybe do you ever go to that <laughs> i never have no <laughs> okay okay well yeah they had this like big arcade deal in downtown disney that was called disney quest right okay and the way that trailer looked, it looked like they took all the stuff from that because they were closing it down and put it in Galactic Star Cruiser. Right. You know, because it looks spacey, right? We can reuse it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, in in comparison, this one did look much better. Oh, much better. Even they made the deck look better, and all they did, all they did was adjust the lighting. Yeah. Yeah, I did notice that. They didn't make it look like a hospital, like a, like a, uh, Star Trek. <laughs> exactly. Well, that, that's what it reminded me of the first time around there. It reminded me of Star Trek, the next generation. Yeah. Cause it was all bright and sterile looking and yeah, that's not Star Wars, man. Star exactly. Wars is dark. It's, it's, it looks used. The only ship that's that bright is, you know, Tana four and right. And, it just, it's not, but I don't think it was a hundred years old, you know, like, it... Oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they actually, you know, I think some of this stuff was brought up in the past and all, but I just wanted to touch on some of this too. Some of the stuff they, they talked about in this thing, you know, yes, this looked better this time around, but I, I have reservations about this, <laughs> about certain things here. So we can go over these one by one, I guess. But so here's here's the first thing. The events of your stay here at Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser are set between the events of Star Wars The Last Jedi and Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, right around the same time as Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, right here at Disney Hollywood. So your stay is wedged in between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Hmm. I wonder how they came to that. I don't know. Because, yes, we, we understand that there's been some time between these two films. You know, like, like, if they'd have said it was between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, I'd be like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> exactly. But. I mean, it would make more sense, right? Because you're only allowed to stay two nights. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but. I, like, when you come in, we're at the end of The Force Awakens. When you leave, <laughs> we're starting The Last Jedi. Right. But I, I just, you know. They came to this place where this takes place between these two films, and it's like, okay, I guess, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel like if it's a, it's the same thing with Galaxy's Edge as a whole, right? It, they've got this kind of like stuck in this certain time period. They, they mentioned that, right? The same timeline as you know when you're visiting Batu, you know. So I I guess it works in that respect but I just I just don't understand how they came to this and they're going to like pigeonhole themselves into this one slot. I mean for a for a Star Wars fan 
I guess I think we've talked about this before, right? If you why not have like the original trilogy floor and uh, the prequel floor, you know, all that kind well, of stuff. Dog, you're missing the main point here. What's that? Their focus is on narrative storytelling. Everything's <laughs> canon, Doug. Yeah, I know. Your stay at at Galactic Star Cruiser is canon. Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up because there's something else that they said here that kind of made me shudder. I don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, well, you know, here, let's see here what you think here. And we'll get to see some of the, the characters that we know and love from the film, including Ray and Kylo, who will actually meet up again for probably the first and maybe the only time between those two films. The Halcyon has been involved in many different adventures, and there are many characters that we know and love from Star Wars that have had an interaction with the Halcyon. So, wait, wait, what? Yeah. Okay, so it, this this kind of, they bring up somehow, some way, Ray and Kylo are going to meet while you're on board the Halcyon. You're going to be witness to this somehow or another. I don't know how this works, you know. Uh if if there are certain things about this that are that are you know that rigid be interesting to see how they they make you know how they allow you to make this your own adventure right yeah never mind never mind nothing's canon anymore <laughs> exactly there you go that's and and then you know the ship has such a rich history and so many characters have have had experiences on it and you know i don't know if you caught it there but the you know that was chewbacca roaring in the background so I'm guessing that's a hint. Well, yeah, I mean, it had to add someone, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I just, I I don't know. I'm having a hard They've overused R2. Yeah, well, of course. I'm sure you'll see him, though, when well, you go. Duh. Yeah. You'll hear him. No, you won't see him. You'll hear him. <laughs> Every time you're walking down the hallway. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I so Ray and Kylo meet here somehow. Hmm. I'm sure we're going to find out, you know, once, once people start going, but you know, it's going to, and like you said, it's canon. Yeah. 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 Once people start going, wink, wink. Um, (laughs) I mean, rumor is they're still having trouble with that part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it'd be interesting to see. Does, does this trailer reverse the fortunes, right? Well, because after the last trailer, there were a slew of cancellations. Yes. Now you could, you could, you could all of a sudden book a date again. Yep. Yep. That's I, I recall that as well. That was for sure. Uh, and you know, this was definitely a better stab at it, but I'm not sure that this was enough to, to draw everyone back. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, especially since, uh, <laughs> apparently you're going to have homework to do before you go. Where will our fans be able to hear all of these stories about the Halcyon? Well, first we've got the Halcyon Legacy comic miniseries. So it's a five issue miniseries that sort of spans the generations of time that, uh, the Halcyon kind of their whole history. After that, we've got the High Republic Mission to Disaster. The Halcyon has such a rich legacy, and I'm so excited to get to tell Halcyon stories for years to come. And I'm excited that our passengers, when they step on board the Halcyon, are going to know those stories, and they're going to be able to participate in their own story and actually shape the events of the story that's happening as part of Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Did you hear that at the end? You're canon. Yeah, uh, yes, you're canon. Uh, but apparently you have to do homework. Now, don't get me wrong. I like comic books, but, you know, uh, it sounds to me like they're expecting you to, uh, read these or something or to know, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it's the way it sounded to me. No, no, that's got, it's really ridiculous because it's like, no, $6,000 wasn't enough. You got to buy these comics. Right. Like, and you know. Uh, it's, I'm sorry, if $6,000, I booked my stay, you better send me the damn comics. <laughs> right. And and um, that's the way you're going to understand this rich history that the ship that no one's heard of in Star Wars, <laughs> you know, has here. This this rich history. I Very rich. I, uh, oh, my gosh. You know, it, it, 
it's one of those things that it just starts to make my head hurt a little bit. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I just don't understand why you couldn't have have this be. I mean, for God's sake, make it the medical frigate or something like that. You know, I mean, it's a, well, first so, off, so it's hundreds of years old, right? Yeah. I made a joke about it being a hundred years old. Then I heard that, like, it's going to be in the old Republic or the high Republic, whatever, which is right. what 400 years before the 60 years before the, like, is that what it is? Cause I'm, I'm not even sure. You know, it's, yeah. It's like 400 years or some 300 years, something like that. Something like that. Several hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is an old ass ship. Right. Well, okay. So the part that I didn't clip was they talked about it being newly refurbished. So, yes, old ship. It's gone through an overhaul. Good to go. It's like, okay. Okay. That's a little weird, but okay. Okay. Ships that have a rich history in Star Wars are beat to shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, the Millennium Falcon has a rich Star Wars history. Yeah. It's a piece of junk and much younger than the Halcyon. <laughs> this is true. Uh, I feel like they could have gone about this in a different way. I mean, you know, make it a Mon Calamari Star Cruiser or something like that. I mean. No, no. I mean, I understand a- what they're doing. They're trying to connect all the threads of what they're doing. What Disney's doing, yeah, which is like, okay, we have this thing several hundred years before the events of the Phantom Menace. How do we work this in? Right. Oh, this old ass ship. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that looks brand new. Make it a freaking Star Destroyer. Because no, still no like like I don't know how refurbishment works in Star Wars. Uh huh. Um, one, you probably don't do that during wartime. Uh, two, right. <laughs> Cause they said newly refurbished. Yes. Yes. That means it's after or around the events of the last Jedi, which means shit's in the fan. Right. Um, yes, exactly. Newly refurbished, which means, uh, wherever the ship was at, it's getting fixed while Leia can't even get a hold of anybody to come help her on, on crate. Right. Yeah. This is why. They were busy. <laughs> they were busy refurbishing, refurbishing the, the house. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. We're working on a cruise ship. That's this is more hilarious. important, Leia. Yes. I. Uh, yeah. You know what? Actually, that sounds legit. Really? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Time of crisis. <laughs> Time of crisis. You know, this is what governments do. Yeah, I guess. No, 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 no. We can't get involved in that war. That's your war. Right. Yes, that was Leo's war, that's for sure. We're, we're, we're building this new ship. Exactly. We'll be building this old ship to be a new ship. Yeah. It's got to be spotless. I mean, come on. This is a contract with Disney. So the one thing that I would, you know, I just, you know, we, as we're talking here, I did have a thought, and this might be like one of the, this is one of the things they should be screaming from the rooftops here if they're, if this is actually a thing, but the Battle of Exegol, if this ship actually takes place amongst all those thousands of ships. It's a cruise ship, dude. I know, but if that were the case, okay, cool. That's something you should be telling everybody. This is going to happen. You, you're going to be involved in that. Okay, now there's there's a point of real interest for me. So far, you know, uh, Ray and Kylo get together in between the movies. What? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, pretty sure the first time they got together in um, The Rise of Skywalker, I thought they were like still upset about the last time they got together, which was in The Last Jedi. Right. So apparently this one can't go well. Exactly. But it's at Disney, so they're probably going to hold hands and dance and you know, all that crap. <laughs> it's possible. Sing a song. Yes. You know, they're going to come out. Do you want to build a freaking snowman? Like, uh, no, no, refurbish a starship. Uh, yeah, yeah, we gotta, we gotta clean this thing up. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm still anxious to hear some of the first reviews 
I I I can't wait. When's it? When, when are people going to start going? I don't remember. Mm. Okay. Whenever people start booking again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was getting pretty close to when the people when it was going to be open. I'm not sure, but I thought it was March. Yeah. If I'm being completely honest. I thought it was March. Okay. Um. Yeah, maybe it was May. Either one way, of those emblems. it won't be that long before we get some feedback, and then then we're really gonna know. We could be way off, you know. It could be the time of your life, but man, so far I'm just not seeing it. You know, like I said. Well, I mean, it's not without its other issues, right? Right. Because it's still it's it's dealing with like okay the stuff you've seen on the internet that that's caused issues, but. Apparently, they're dealing with staffing issues. Oh, I didn't even think about that, but yet that makes total sense. Because here's the other thing. They're trying to get people to transfer from other places within Disney, right? Okay. Places with windows. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I got to say, like, just, just think about this logically, right? If, if you're an employee at a restaurant or something like that, yeah um a place that feels open you know has something like windows versus something that is closed off it looks like you're in space outdoor restaurant yeah yeah like yeah it's 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 yeah i'm sorry what's my selling point here exactly and it's disney so i'm sure it's like "Ah, if you go there we'll give you you know 15 cents or something yeah (laughs) that that makes complete sense i didn't even think about that but yeah hmm how do you provide this i I guess there's they're dealing with staffing issues with this how do you provide this this immersive uh experience when when, you have to deal with people when yeah when when you don't have the staff to do it yeah and and the people yes i mean because yeah, for the right amount of money, I mean, I would come down and sell it, right? Like, <laughs> right. I'd come down, I'd give you the best acting I can do. <laughs> but, this is a theme park we're talking about. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we'll see, right? Like you said, could be great. Could be great. Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's go to something that's for sure great. And it's time that? for a for sure. John Williams, aha, uh-huh. set to score the theme for Disney Plus Obi Wan Kenobi series. I love it. So, the main theme, I'm assuming. I would assume so as well. Now, in Episode Four, the theme for Obi Wan Kenobi is the Force theme. Right now, is he coming back just to re-record the Force theme? With I've got a feeling what we're gonna hear. Is something that has elements of the Force theme, but expands upon it. That's what I have a feeling we're going to hear. And I feel like this is going to be, you know, because this is this is going to be what? Four episodes? Did they say that? I forget. I think it's going to be something like that. Obi-Wan? Yeah. I... So, a handful of episodes. Yes. It's probably what we're going to hear at the beginning of each one. <clears throat> and possibly at the conclusion of each one. But... All of the stuff that happens throughout each episode or chapter, whatever they're going to call them, I have a feeling that'll be somebody else's work. Because, you know, if if these are longer episodes, which I imagine they probably will be, you know, if they're in the vicinity of 75, 90 minutes or something like that. You know, that's like oh, scoring, you think they're going to be that long? I'm, I'm hoping that they will be because, you know, to tell a good story. Yeah, my hopes. You know. Oh, dude. I hope we don't have four 25-minute episodes because, dang, you know, I'd like a little more story than that. But, well, uh, but if I'm right about that. You know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping that Obi-Wan Kenobi actually tells the story of Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> okay. Because so far on Disney+, Plus, it hasn't been a thing. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> well, yep. Still I, being a curmudgeon about that. Yeah, I see. I just feel like, uh, I feel like if they were four 25 minute episodes or half hour episodes, 
then John Williams could probably come in and do it all. It would be like scoring another movie. If they're longer, and it's like scoring two or three movies worth of time, he'd probably be like, eh, no, ain't got that kind of time. I can do a theme for you, call it good, you know. But being such a, uh, you know, one of the high-profile classic characters, I can see John Williams wanting to do it. It's insane it would be easy for him to come in, though, and do this. I mean, the, the man's retired. With the exception of Indiana Jones. Right. And retired. Okay. I think what he's done is slowed his schedule down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because cause I know the day that I say I'm retired, I mean, don't call me for Jack. <laughs> right. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the George Lucas. Yeah. I'm retired. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's, that's how it's going to go. Yeah, but we need your help. Yeah, it sucks to be you. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I just I don't know. I think I think uh, it's got to be something like that. Like you know, I'll do a theme, and we'll call it good. And uh, you know, someone else is going to do all the backing music for during the film or, or episodes. So I wonder who they're going to tap for that. I'm not sure. Because I haven't seen anything. I mean, maybe I have, and I'm blanking. I don't recall hearing anything. For something like this, though, it wouldn't surprise me to have another high-profile composer. You know, somebody who doesn't mind working within the realm of John Williams's work. Yeah, but here's the other. Here's the other thought. Given the era we're working with here. Yeah. Is it unthinkable that they don't need any more music than the theme? Maybe they're just going to use existing original trilogy music to score the thing? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, is is it out of the realm of possibility? You know, they've got themes for stuff like the Jawas. They've got themes for, you know, like... Which, in my opinion, all of that kind of stuff can be incorporated in. But it's got to be... A new arrangement. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, and and I'm not talking about just but, chopping up the music and just re, you know, uh, uh, shuffling it, it up a, and putting it back together. It would be a rearrangement, and it. I just think it would be if they went that route. It would be quiet composer, right? You might not have to announce it ahead of time. Maybe I just I just feel like this is the one thing everybody's looking forward to this year. They and they know it. You know, they know that this Obi-Wan Kenobi show is going to be a big deal. That's why where I was leaning was maybe someone like a Ludwig Gordonson or uh, what's his name? Uh, Michael Giacchino. You think Giacchino would come in for a show? Maybe. I mean, like I said, this show. I mean, I guess they got freaking John Williams. Yeah. Um, But these are guys who can work around john williams's stuff you know they've both proven that i just wonder if it would be like a quiet thing and it's like uh, yeah we had kevin kiner that would work too yeah but whenever they ever announced ahead of time that kevin kiner was scoring something no they haven't but uh i don't know i mean if <laughs> i don't know why they would keep it quiet honestly I don't know why they do a lot of things. I got, I got a feeling that this... I don't know why the house is 300 years old. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got a feeling that we're going to hear whoever's composing this is, is somebody that we know. Or maybe, maybe uh, uh, a couple guys that we know. A couple composers. And it's uh, somebody that we're familiar with their work. Someone everyone can get behind. Not have any any reservations about what we might get. You know what I'm saying? We're still talking about Star Wars, right? <laughs> we are. Uh, <laughs> this is me remembering how Star Wars used to be. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. You remember a time when everyone could get behind it? Kinda, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be new for me. Oh man, 1999 was awesome. Everyone was behind that? Yeah, until it opened. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, see, I got you there. Star Wars late 1998. <laughs> gotcha. Because <laughs> I knew where you were going to go with that one. Jar Jar Binks, man. That dude's going to be the shit. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> it's an excellent scene from Fanboys. For sure. Yes. <laughs> it kind of does convey the the mood beforehand, right? Absolutely. Because leading up to it, oh my god. Everything's going to be awesome. Everything was going to be awesome. Yes. There were some disappointments that a lot of people had, but, you know, overall, it wasn't bad. All right. So, keeping with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ah, yeah. Another another casting rumor. Yeah. So. <laughs> confirmation question mark? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a little weird and... and you know, y'all might have heard this already, but we're just going to, you know, we're going to give you our take on this too. So, uh, there's a, you know, YouTuber, Star Wars Santa, right? Guy definitely looks like Santa. Uh, head on Jason. So is he Ward. going with because of the look or is it because I think so. Gift? I think so. <laughs> you know, basically guy that looks like Santa talks about Star Wars, you know? Okay. Uh, I can dig it. He uh, uh, did a live stream with uh, Jason Ward from making Star Wars. And there was a point in there where they were talking about actually Yoda and how Yoda might play into Obi-Wan Kenobi. And, you know, because because Yoda kind of, I don't know what you would call it, forced communed with Ezra Bridger from afar, if something like that might happen with Obi-Wan or not in this net. And then, uh, Jason Ward um, kind of drops a little, what he calls, confirmed thing here. So, Well, that's and my again, question about Qui-Gon, is I know Qui-Gon's in it, but I don't know if he's a voiceover or if he's, if he's a physical ghost. Right, right. And, and I think, uh, again, going back to Rebels, and, and that was and, that was that was a really big scoop, by the way. I just dropped it. Right. Yeah, I know you. Did. I, <laughs> I know. Like, I know he's in it now. Like I was know. Like, um, I, I've been told. I was like, so. Jason, you just said something. I don't know that you've said. Uh, so, so I was like, I was going to try to wait and see if you really meant to say that. I was yeah, like, I did. So according to Jason Ward, Qui Gon's in this, meaning Liam Neeson. Uh, whether just a voice. Or Force Ghost. So now it's funny. Well, I think that my question. Huh? Here's my question. Okay. If they're doing just a voice, do they get Liam Neeson? Well, I think so because they got Liam Neeson for Clone Wars. <laughs> okay. That's fair. I mean, it's if he's doing just the voice, that's something you can, you know, with the right equipment, you could do from home, really. But, uh, you know, it, I would love to see him as a as a force ghost. You know, you know like he's he's actually making his way through. Uh, you know, what would you what do they call that the the you know becoming one with the force and all all the, all the whatever you know being able to be a force ghost. Uh, what got me was, I think the last thing we heard from Liam Neeson was. You know, when they asked about him being in the Obi Wan Kenobi show, he's like, "Hey Disney, oh, show me the money." <laughs> you know, uh, didn't the last thing we heard from him say like, "Oh, is Star Wars still a thing?" Yeah, wasn't that all part of the thing? Uh, the same thing? I, I I I thought I don't know, but yeah yeah he's like, yeah oh are they still doing that? <laughs> that was funny. Oh yeah, I, yeah, didn't, I, I, I didn't think Star Wars was relevant anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'd do something. Yeah, yeah. If they wanted to pay me enough, yeah. <laughs> uh, you gotta love it because, you know, it's funny how these That's actors when, uh, look at these things. Say, you know, we're talking about Disney, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, billions of dollars. You don't get billions of dollars by giving it to other people. Oh, <laughs> oh you got to give out a little bit to get, all, <laughs> to get all of us to subscribe, you know. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, but you don't give it to every guy you want to have cameo. <laughs> but 
But I mean, this is one of those things that it's it's kind of like, you know, we all expect to see this. So I don't think anybody's really surprised. It's just we haven't really had a confirmation and this is the closest we've gotten to it, which you know, uh like him or not, you know, Jason Ward does have some scoops every now and then, so you know. Oh, yeah, he has some good ones. Yeah. He's definitely got some inside track. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. He's not wrong very often. Right. I would expect to see Liam Neeson in here in some way, whether it be a voice. I, I honestly don't think it'll be a voice. It may start that way. That's kind of how I'm feeling, too. Like, this, this progression that we saw Obi-Wan go through throughout the original trilogy we might actually get to see some of that out of Liam Neeson playing Qui-Gon throughout Obi-Wan's uh, time of exile, you know? Because that would right. kind of like be the, you know, it would fit in with this, you know, Star Wars ring theory stuff or whatever they talk about, you know, everything comes back around, you know, it's 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 like a poem, it, it, it rhymes, right? Ring theory? Yeah. <laughs> Well, not the old ring theory. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. But uh, it would make sense because, you know, these themes do repeat. So They do. They do. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Sounds legit. Sounds inevitable. I... <laughs> that's, 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 the, that's the main thing. It doesn't just sound legit. I mean. Right. I feel like you could just guess on this one and be right. Like, Yeah. Well, in a way, yeah. Yeah, and the only thing uh, keeping us from from like just fully committing to saying, "Oh, for sure he's in there," is Liam Neeson saying, "You know, keeping his mouth shut." You know, <laughs> especially when it comes across like you said, you know, "Oh, Star Wars is a thing." Yeah, right? that was like that was like a year and a half ago. It wasn't that long ago. I think it was. I don't know, man. Seems more recent. I feel like that was during the whole height of COVID lockdowns and he was doing a remote interview. And... Oh, he was definitely doing a remote interview. But I mean, that stuff was going on six months ago too. So, Yeah, this definitely wasn't six months ago. This was longer than that. Huh. I feel pretty confident in saying that. Okay, well, if that's the case, then he's had plenty of time to go reprise He's had role. plenty of time for Disney to keep him off a microphone. That's true. Very true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Liam, we won't be needing your uh your uh uh your publicity tour for this one. You just just go chill. Yeah. We know that Ewan's good at keeping a secret. Yeah. Cause he was in talks for doing this Obi Wan Kenobi thing for what, five years or something? He's good at keeping a secret. That that's a funny way to call him a liar. Yeah, there you well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> And he started to feel bad about it, which good. <laughs> hmm. What are you seeing? Uh, just something about him retiring. Oh, really? Yeah. It, it, it's screen rant, so just screen okay. assault. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to read the article. Um, <laughs> I, I thought maybe I'd see it right away. Gotcha. And the, the reason I make that screen rant comment is just because I'm going based on headline. Don't do that. Right, yeah. That's never a good policy. Don't do that. Don't go on headlines. Headlines are terrible. They are terrible. But, yeah, it's... I think that's, like I said, inevitable. I, I, I would be shocked. I would honestly be shocked if there wasn't a Qui-Gon appearance in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. I, I, I feel I think... like they're leaving something on the table if they ignore that. Agreed. Um, and, and you're talking about bringing in Bail Organa. Right. I don't know how you can bring in Bail Organa and leave Qui-Gon off the table. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he's got to be there because this is, you know, the relationship between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, you know, I, even at the end of Revenge of the Sith, you know, the, the look on Obi-Wan's face when he hears from Yoda, you know, I've been communing with your old master, and it's like, why? Oh yeah, that's 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 something we got to see because that little 
bit right there set it all up. So yes, we got to see that. Yeah, my homie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. It was. Yeah. I don't think you can walk away without telling that story. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, Doug, you had me write something down on my notes. What? Can you tell me what the hell Ryan Reynolds and Star Wars have in common? Um. Well. Is Deadpool showing up in Star Wars? Yes. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is, he's got a, uh, a movie coming up on Netflix. It's called The Atom Project. And apparently it features a running gag about Star Wars. Okay. So, so you know, everybody uh, take note. The Adam Project is what you're going to want to check out on Netflix to, uh, you know, take part in his running gag, apparently. Uh, so when he's promoting this movie, um, you know, of course, he's asked um, uh, if Star Wars would be a franchise that he would be open to joining. And Oh, and of course, he was the only guy ever to say no. Um. No. So <laughs> he says, uh, that would be a real hard thing to say no to. But honestly, I'm not making this up. It's not something I've ever thought of. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> right. It's, uh, you're an actor, right? So, you know. yeah. 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 So, you know what that tells me? He's thought of this. Yeah. He's an Obi-Wan. You think? No way. No way. Yeah, you just learned from Ewan McGregor. Oh, just lie? Like, I've never even thought of Star Wars. <laughs> At least he didn't say, oh, is that still a thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've played Deadpool, Green Lantern. Yeah, Star Wars, what the hell is that? Uh, I mean, when you think about it, though, think about Ryan Reynolds in a Star Wars movie. What kind of character could he be? I mean, because, you know. Smuggler. Of course, it's got to be something like that. Dash Rendar. Oh, ooh, hmm. Now you're getting somewhere. Are you laughing at me? <laughs> no, I just, I just throwing it out there, right? Yeah, that's uh, it's actually not bad, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. It would have to be something like that. Uh, he's certainly not going to play a Jedi. Mm -mm. Put it that way. Um, I could even see him playing a more serious role but still play a smuggler or something like that, you know, some kind of, you know. Sure. You know, he could play talent card, right? Like Talent card, yeah. I could see it. Maybe. Dash Rendar makes more sense. Dash Rendar makes a lot more sense. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. The guy with always the smart-ass comment, that's for sure. Yep. So, yeah, it was the first one that popped to mind. It's like, oh, who can he play? Dash Rendar. Yeah, nah. that's... Ah, son of a bitch, you're right. Yep. <laughs> that's so. I mean, basically, you know, I thought we'd have a little more discussion about this, but uh, you know, like, like where would he fit in in Star Wars? Well, okay, you nailed it right away. So yeah, Dash Rendar, Book of Boba Fett, done. Book of Boba Fett. Ooh, nice. Could happen. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, it could happen. I feel like he's still a little young to pull that off for that time frame, right? Uh, I don't know. Close. It's close. I mean, it's close. A, about the same age or a little younger than Han Solo in Return of the Jedi, right? So, right. So, like what I said, it's close. Interesting thought, Joe. I like it. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this rumor to take hold here. I like it. <laughs> yeah, rumor. I know. <laughs> You heard it here first because we just made it up, man. I I, I hate to do it because I've been I've been swearing a lot this episode, but rumor. I guess it makes sense. We could say yeah, it's a rumor because yeah, it's bullshit, right? Like, exactly. <laughs> just like most Star Wars rumors. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> so yep, this is solid. <laughs> uh, hey, I like it anyway. I'll say that. Yeah, I, honestly. I could see it. Right? I could see it, and I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad either. I mean, I gotta say, after Deadpool, sorry, like, the, the, 
the guy can play characters, man. Yeah. I mean, even, even Green Lantern, even like Green Lantern was a horribly written movie. Right. Like it, it it's not even his fault. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, like can you really fault the guy for like how the character was portrayed when the whole movie was terrible right that was definitely not his fault uh where where he's excelled you know he's excelled for sure yeah um yeah he's definitely he's definitely probably the the top ranking smart ass in hollywood for sure so yeah so yeah death render I like it. All right. Lucasfilm, get on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're definitely listening to those. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Hmm. This next one I have now, I'm wondering, does this tie in? Oh. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, rumor has it. I don't know. Is it really rumor at this point? Like. Who is reporting this? You know, the beauty part about this article is it says it's being reported that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah. Okay. This is definitely solid uh, BS material. Yes. <laughs> um, so John Watts, it's rumored that John Watts is directing a star Wars project set for this summer. Right. So John Watts, the director of uh, the Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy. Right. Maybe directing a Star Wars film. Film or... Or or Disney Plus. It, it, it does say Disney Plus. This so, correction. Upcoming, mysteriously unannounced Star Wars series. Yeah. Dash <laughs> Rendar series. Yes. I'm, I'm thinking it in now. <laughs> yeah. Starring Ryan Reynolds. A beautiful thing. Yep. So, <laughs> so yeah. What, what do you make of this? Like, John Watts. Like, well... I mean, set to direct one this summer. Have we heard anything about who's directing Ahsoka? I don't think so. Uh, could that be it? It could be. It could. It could be like an episode of Ahsoka, maybe. Um, because Ahsoka Hell, it could be an episode of The Mandalorian. Could be. I mean, Ahsoka is supposed to go in front of cameras, I believe, in a couple months. Uh. Is Mandalorian season three already in front of cameras? I thought so. So, you know, filming Ahsoka could go into summer, probably will go into summer. Without a doubt. Uh, you know, if there's something else that they're doing, they haven't told us what it is yet, which is, you know, lately it's kind of unlike Lucasfilm, you know, they like to announce a lot of projects and then just like whittle them away, you know? You're right. Oh, yeah, so let's update that. John Watts to direct a canceled Star Wars project. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, this summer, yeah, he, he, he is scheduled to direct Rangers of the New Republic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, the next the next headline we're going to get from John Watts is, uh, due to creative differences, um, will not be directing Star Wars stuff. Well, I mean, that's a very real possibility. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you got to look at it from from the standpoint of somebody in his position, right? His latest Spider-Man movie is taking in like 1.8 billion worldwide at the top. I'm ready for Star right Wars. Now. Come on. It's like, yeah, all I've got left to do is Star Wars, you know? So I've heard, and, and I got to say, I've, I haven't seen the latest Spider-Man movie. Nor have I. Uh, but man, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing great things. My daughter saw it and she loved it. Now, now that being said, um, I've heard great things about everything. Marvel. True. Yes. So yeah, I'm taking that with a gigantic grain of salt because I'm <laughs> finally, finally getting caught up. Okay. I gotta say, don't know what y'all have been raving about. <laughs> they're okay, though. I mean, they're okay. They're, they're okay. serviceable. They're serviceable. Yes, they're the, worth watching. Um, that's debatable, but <laughs> um, not the worst thing I've ever seen. Right. But 
I will say. I don't know that it's worth all the hype. Yeah. I'm with you there. Seriously, like I, I had people telling me, like, oh man, you stopped at the best time. Come on, Civil War, Endgame, all that stuff. Like you're missing that. I watch those movies, I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> where's the where's the greatness I'm missing? Right. Like like <sighs> Thanos? Eh. Right. I mean, actor did a great job. Yep. Um, story kind of cool. Mm, not the most badass villain I've ever seen. Exactly. I, I was kind of led on to believe that. So Darth Vader would kick the crap out of this guy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for saying so. Because I agree. I mean, so yeah, it's so yeah. But still, I'm hearing great things about uh, No Way Home. Um, I actually heard great things about all three of the Spider-Man films. Have you seen any of them yet? No. Okay. I will no, say. No, I got this I got this gigantic problem, right? They're not on Disney Plus. Ah, uh, yes. Um they are pretty good. Um you know, they and and they can stand alone, you know. Well, this makes sense to me, right? Because I'll 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 say this, this may be unpopular. But to me, Spider-Man is the Batman of the Marvel Universe. Kind of and the sense. reason I say that, okay, is because in the DC Universe, Batman has the best villains. Yep. They are the most entertaining villains. Yep. It's the same for Spider-Man. Spider-Man yeah. has the best villains in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. So it makes the Spider-Man storytelling that much better. You know, Spider-Man's animated series, you know, with kingpin and you know like all these all these villains it, it was the best right of everything i saw in marvel you know x-men every time they fight uh, magneto with the exception of magneto magneto was a great villain yep um x-men always fell short you know like all these all these marvel characters they never had as good of villains as spider-man right spider-man always had the best so yeah to me spider-man the batman of marvel Makes sense. Just in a different way than you would think of Batman in something else. Because it's it's definitely not the same. I guess it is the same story. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Kind of, yeah. You know, instead of his parents, his uncle gets killed. Only problem with Spider-Man is he's broke. <laughs> right, right, yeah. He's, he's running around in pajamas. Yes. Yep. I, actually has legit superpowers, whereas Batman's got money. Oh, yeah, which is by far the best line from Justice League. Yes. What's your superpower? I'm rich. <laughs> I'm rich, yeah. Ben Affleck credited with one of the best Batman lines ever. Agreed. That would be a Bruce Wayne line, but yes, I agree. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. I do. Didn't realize I was separated too. Well, you know, every now and then you and I can get technical on each other, and I was just going to... I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but, yeah, I... I I like the idea of him coming into Star Wars. It was one of he, even though I haven't seen it, right? But for people to be talking this way about Spider, because I feel like the bar is still kind of high, especially given the way the um, oh man, what's his name? The previous Spider Man, not Garfield, the one before that. Gar- what? Not Andrew Garfield. Who? Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. You know, not uh, even sure give, who this Garfield guy is. I don't know. Oh, you haven't seen those? No. <laughs> I thought those were good. Like okay. it, they had their faults, without a doubt. Um, but I thought they were they were relatively good. Okay. Mainly because Spider Man benefits from a fantastic villain pool. Ah, gotcha. It's easy to do good if you got a good villain pool, man. I'm just saying. Like, right. It It's part of what makes these stories great. Oh, for sure. You know, and like it's like watching the Iron Man films, right? Like, The reason they suck is because their villains suck. <laughs> right. I mean, Whiplash? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? That was the villain you picked? Iron Man, whatever. Yeah. It's, funny, it's funny you say that, right? But here we are, the guy who gave us Iron Man. Is currently giving us the best Star Wars we've had in the last eight years or so. Hey, everyone makes mistakes, man. <laughs> right. 
I don't know if he would feel that way, but he right. should. <laughs> he should. <laughs> and you'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't Seems like a, a good move, if it's true. Yeah. You know, I, my thing is, I'm just not sure what other project it could be. If it's not Ahsoka, what is it then? It's something that they're keeping under wraps, which, you know, they haven't really done recently. I'm pretty sure we figured out the secret tonight. Yeah. Rangers. No, Dash Rendar, man. Oh, Dash Rendar. I like that one better because, yeah, Rangers ain't happening. Starring Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Figured it out. I, w- I would definitely check that out. <laughs> but you know what? Let me let me just throw this out there. Uh huh. I I don't like this guy for that. <laughs> you know who I want for a Dash Rendar series? If we if we got Ryan Reynolds. Uh huh. We're doing Dash Rendar. I want Taika Waititi. Oh yeah, that would make sense. Wow. Just saying. I think we got this thing figured out. They just need to listen <laughs> to us. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's listen to the rants of some guys on a podcast. Or yeah, I know. Never happened. But we just yep. had the greatest idea ever. <laughs> I mean, it's solid. It's yes. solid. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Here they are ignoring us and we're doing their job for them. Exactly. They could have these ideas for free. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're going to charge them? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to charge me $6,000 to go to a damn hotel. Yeah, you're damn right I'm going to charge them. That's true. That is true. <laughs> they are going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you have anything to add, you can always email us, show at thewordsandmore.com. It's the best way to get a hold of us. But we're also on social media, at the words and more on Twitter, facebook.com slash thewordsandmore. At the Words and More on Instagram. You can find all that and all the ways to find the show over at thewordsandmore.com. Uh, any final thoughts this week, Doug? No, I think that about covers it. All right. We will talk next week. <laughs>